Education has long been identified as the bedrock of human and societal development. To that extent, nations and all levels of human society as well as families and individuals have always placed premium value on the education of the citizenry. Since independence, Nigeria has engaged in the education of our citizens with a view especially to giving the younger generation a future. Arguably, Delta State has remained one state in the nation that has embraced the education of its citizens with so much commitment and has produced time-tested professionals serving in various human endeavors and capacities. Despite these achievements, there was an obvious DF of skilled manpower to meet up demands in the informal sectors of the economy as well as development of society. What the governor is looking at is to create an environment and a people who are empowered to create wealth and to live in an environment that is conducive and to raise our children and generation in such a way that we have sustainable wealth, peace and prosperity. Over the years, Nigeria as a nation has tended to build and maintain grammar schools, colleges of education, polytechnics and universities, but with comparative zeal has discouraged the development of technical colleges and allied institutions where men and women could learn skills that can give them a living and a name, as well as make them instruments for meeting the myriad of needs for construction as well as repairs of facilities and utilities in the society. Uh, technical education is the bedrock of technological development of a nation. No nation can grow beyond its technological uh, level. So especially in this state, our amiable governor who has special interest in technical education. Indeed, technical education had been undermined to the extent that for decades, technical colleges that were existing in parts of the nation and indeed Delta State were either outrightly closed down or were neglected and allowed to decay by both governments and the people. A lot of damage was done over the years. Um, the effect of that, of that the damage that, um, that was caused really can be seen in the unemployment um, numbers. So before this administration came on board, His Excellency had done a lot of research into it and had looked into it um, and realized that there was a need for us to revamp a particular sector. And um, that was the technical and vocational education subsector. Understandably, the consequences of neglecting technical education are now impacting severely on the Nigerian society. While many young school leavers are finding it increasingly hard to secure jobs, there is now a higher demand for persons who can dispense of skills or vocational abilities. In those days, when you, if you were building a house, you will go to Republic of Bene or Kotoni to go and get people to do various aspects of your construction. And that's because we didn't have the required manpower or the people that had the, the, the skill um, to do it. The desire to fill this lacuna and address the growing trend of youth unemployment propelled the Delta State Governor, Senator Ifan Yokoa, to revamp technical education and also restore the technical colleges which were closed down or neglected for years. When he came in in 2015, first of all, he sent a bill to the House of Assembly through which the Delta State Technical and Vocational Education Board was created. He went further to taking another step by causing an infrastructural revamp in the six technical colleges. He took another step further by ensuring that the teachers who are meant to train or teach these students were adequately groomed. The Okawa-led administration embarked on the building and rebuilding of infrastructures in six technical colleges across the state. 
These technical colleges are located in Abo, Ineka South, Iseluku, in Anyocha North, Utagbube in Ndokwa West, Sapele in Sapele Local Government, Ofagbe in Isoko North, and Otogo in Ugeli North Local Government Areas. When we started, there was this apathy. People were not really interested in vocational education. What we did was actually to interface with the people. Going down to talk to the traditional rulers through town hall meetings, we were able to talk to the parents and we were able to create that needed awareness. So they now begin to understand the benefits that they even stand on a double advantage. Irrespective of whatever you are trained for and you have these vocational skills, then you are better off in life. A visit to the schools reveals the enormity and quality of infrastructural development carried out on them. The principals, teachers and students of the schools, as well as people from the catchment areas where the schools are located, have continued to commend the Okoa administration for the wisdom in the decision as well as the commitment to restore the technical colleges. We so much thank God for this new system that our governor, uh, Dr. Ifa Yukoma, have provided. And you know, in this session we are now, we no longer deal with writing. We deal with uh, computer in our exams, like jam. So we, when we start preparing from our juniors, uh, before then, we can know how to do some certain things. At Sapple Technical College, Smart Delta Media Team met the school in full swing with many practical classes in session. The investment of Delta State Government in technical and vocational education is no doubt yielding dividends. These students have the benefit in studying in a brand new laboratory provided by the State Government in conjunction with some other donor agencies. This, of course, offers them practical experience in teaching and learning, which aids the impartation of knowledge. I'm going to be speaking to one or two of them to hear what they have to say about their experiences. Practicals in this school really helped me a lot, and I thank the school, and I also thank the government, and I thank Okoa for this suitable environment for us. Practical classes make you to understand more than theory classes. For some years, I've been teaching Trinkas College, and uh, the number of intakes every year, because of the practical knowledge here, is increasing rapidly. First of all, I really appreciate the government for providing facilities in this school. At the automobile workshop, we met young Matthew F. A. Godswell, whose confidence of a brighter future is unshakable. The knowledge I acquire here is more than those that attend on high secondary school. Like now, to be an automobile engineer, yeah, I already really have the knowledge of being an automobile engineer. Now, if I go to university straight now, is that I will move straight to the teacher. Talking about the Otubumba system, I know what they're talking about. The hope of a brighter future, as expressed by young Matthew, is akin to the experience of Ike Chuku in Iseluku Technical College in the same automobile department, as well as Oshuakbo. This crash out, we are about to lose the main bearing cap to bring down the piston. The crash has converted the circulatory movement of the piston into rotatory movement of the engine to transmit the drive from the flywheel into the gearbox, which takes the drive from the gearbox to the rear propeller shaft, which transmitted to the rear axle to allow the, enable the car to move. Technical education is very important to me in the sense that the knowledge I'm learning here is even more beneficial than other students who went to other secondary school at the end and I went to Roadside will show up and say that they are learning auto mechanic. The government did not only upgrade infrastructure in these technical colleges, but also spent hundreds of millions of naira to procure and install machinery and equipment for them. These machinery and equipment cover the following key disciplines auto mechanics, mechanical installations and repairs, electrical installations welding and fabrication, carpentry and upholstery, as well as building and catering. I'm very proud of myself to be in technical college and there is nothing in welding and fabrication that I cannot do. Thank you to Governor Okowa. I'm a welder and if the government is not able to employ us, I can engage myself by opening a roadside welding store. To me, it's very, very helpful. 
The staff and students of Sapple Technical College are not only enjoying world-class facilities in the classrooms, the ambience and aesthetic value of the environment, particularly the beauty of the internal roads, make learning much more pleasurable. It is heartwarming to note that a replica of the success story recorded in Sapple Technical College is playing out in Kwale, Ofagbe, Abo, Iseluku and Otogo Technical Colleges. For instance, in Kwale Technical College, the principal tells us that there is a huge demand for admission in her school because parents are beginning to see the need for skills acquisition. Before last year, it was 664. Last year, there were 750, 757. As of today, we have 1,091 students. In the mechanical workshop, we met students and teachers working together to fix a car in a practical demonstration class. It helps to bring up more of those that are not employed to be employed. And it brings a climate to society and it helps to this very community. The practical is so very essential and good to, to me personally and everyone in this uh, course department because it's helpful because it has given me a, a creativity job to do aside. With this now, they were able to come in contact with life vehicle. If they face such problem in the outside apart from this place, they can go straight to do exactly the problem. As you, as you can see, they are the people doing the job. I'm just instructing them, guiding them exactly what to do. And in Ofagbe Technical College, the students are doing so well that they are already breadwinners while still studying. In fact, the brick, block and concrete BBC department is so good that it wins contracts for buildings from private citizens. Smart Delta Media team was informed that the BBC department was on site somewhere handling a building. And trust us, we went to see things for ourselves. What we are witnessing here today is what a focused and quality investment in technical education is doing right here in Delta State. The people you see right here on site are students of Fagbe Technical College from the brick, block and concrete department. Residents of this area have found them capable and therefore have entrusted them with building of their homes. Right here in my hand is the ground floor plan of this building, also prepared by the same students. Now I would like to talk to one or two of them and find out what this means for them as students and what this can also do for the larger Delta State. Hello my friend, can you tell me, what, what is this doing for you as a student of this department and from this school? From October to this date, we've learned, we've learned much taught us how to set a foundation. As you can see, this two-bedroom flat, we've done the, the foundation at this level with the, without the help of our HOD. Technical ed education is very good. Yes, I'm giving me a lot of things. So it's where I'm in another school. They have not taught me how to miss cement, to, boil, to miss the sand. So as I come to this school now, I learn many things from it. It really, really helps us a lot. As you can see, we have a lot of tools. Sometimes when we work, we gather the money and use it to get more tools. Sometimes when we, there are many ways, it helps us to buy cement, then make bricks and block in the school as practical. Sometimes it helps me towards my future. I'm planning towards it on this. I believe I can feed my wife and children. We are home to the black gold, where human talents abound. Taking great steps, a sure it's price with eyes on the prize. Together we'll make things right.
live, invest, and experience the possibilities in our Delta. Moving from Ofagbe to Otogo Technical College, we caught up with marvelous Akbovesora, the only girl in auto mechanic department among 40 boys. Her peers call her First Lady. First Lady! Don't do, don't do. She is making waves among the boys as she says her sex has nothing to do with her ability to fix cars and do other mechanical chores. Uh, I choose to do this kind of profession because I just feel like it will be good, it will help me and I don't want other people to think because you are gay, you want to be a you want to do this, you want to do that. As a matter of fact now, I can pull out the top cylinder, I can fix in the piston and also dismount the piston. I'm able to do all this kind of thing because I'm here. So I will encourage other girls to join me as a girl to also prove to the guys that it's not only a boy that can fix a motor vehicle, it's not only a boy that can discharge a motor vehicle and also replace it. That's the only thing I will tell girls that they should put more courage and be able to join the guys' crew just like me. Marvelous is not alone in the number of students who have made the school proud. A revaye destiny. Ejiro, Emoyfe, and many others have similar testimonies. I've learned so many things. I can study and I can look for fault in the circuits or in the houses, and I can solve so many problems in electricity. And as you can see here, this is a machine used to lose tire and to change the wind. Why this is an air compressor? We use it to compress air when we want to work in our engine. What you can see this is our wind balancer. We use this to balance our wheel anytime we want to work for alignment. So this was short. We thank the government very well for what they've been doing to us. But because when I came to this school or technical college, the school workshop was not like this. It was the help of the government that we were able to have this equipment we have here, our new toolbox, all the energy we have here are standard. Just about a year ago, Otogo Technical School was almost non-existent with decayed and dilapidated infrastructure, insecurity, and other vices. With a population of slightly above 100, the hope of survival seemed so far. But today, with hard work, determination, and focus of the principal, teachers, and students, the school now has a new challenge of inadequate seats for a growing population of almost 700 and still counting, but the management preferred a solution. What I did was move around the community to tell them that there is a technical school here and government is funding it and there are a lot of equipment coming and government has given us grants to buy equipment to wake up the technical college and they should send their children and ward down to the school. I used tank crier, I went to the community, Ogok community, I went down to the market square, I did not stop there, I went to churches. Their innovations and construction prowess no doubt earned them awards and they even won the second position in the most recent statewide competition organized for technical and vocational schools. The noise you are hearing, there are small, small elements inside this drum. Those are the elements that is responsible for peeling this very air, cassava. But when you add water to it now, eh, it will not only be peeling it, but it will be washing it. Both peeling and washing. The block, brick and concrete department, in collaboration with welding and iron fabrication, mold electric poles and other iron works, which they sell to make money for their department. Before Okowa's government, the department has not been buoyant the way it is now. The department is better off than what it was before. Okowa, Governor Okowa's tenor made us to experience good things in terms of uh, consumables. Abo and Iseluku schools are among the six technical colleges that have been revamped and repositioned to meet the lacuna created by many years of neglect. Amasianya, Chine Cherem, and Mordi Joy in the food and catering craft department are already gearing up to carve a niche for themselves in this field. When I graduate from this school, 
I can be able to help my parents and even help myself, send myself to higher institution with this catering work. I won't go out to beg food from anybody because I'm self-employed. The students in the welding and fabrication department, also in Iseluku, were most grateful to the governor for the provision of various high-tech equipment to facilitate and improve learning. This is in addition to a complete set of working kits. Uche Nebo and his colleagues were proud to showcase their products. I'm very grateful for his SLNC. Dr. Ifan Nkowa, he produced a machine for us, like the overall goggle and all that, and the device we use, and safety boots, safety goggles that we use in wearing, and other machines which we use, like this folding machine and this uh, steam machine and all that. We use it in wedding of our trucks and everything. The serene and clean environment alongside enthusiastic students we met at Abo affirmed of the new lease of life infused into the institution to revamp, equip and upgrade every facet of the school. Udochuku Chikadibia a year two student of electrical department Abo Technical College is glad to be living his childhood dream to becoming an electrical engineer. When I was a little kid, I liked to join cables since the time I was in primary school. So I thank God for Okawa that brought this school, that established this school. Without this school, my dream wouldn't have come to pass. You, your square. A peep into the building department. Mr. Paul, a lecturer, says his final year students have been adequately prepared for their external exams. Okeleke Meka, Ofor Favor, and Adibo Doka reaffirm this confidence. Anything that is based on building departments, such as I can lay block, I can mold block, I can lay, I can do curves, interlock, even drawing, I can draw. So any culture that comes out in drawing, I can handle it. This one is the motor for caves. Why this one is the motor for interlocking stone. And these caves is used mostly for the marcation, that is walkway. Why these caves is used for tiling the ground. This is a specimen, it's called chimney. And the essence of this is to remove smoke from the house. In a case where there is no, uh, no much ventilation in the house, this is expected to be there so that it can remove smoke easily from the house. And with these, I'm 100% sure that when it comes out in NAPTEP, I can do better than this. For 10 years, Arbor Technical College existed without power supply, dearth of equipment and human resources. Today, however, the story is that of hope, confidence and development of inherent abilities. The school now can boast of seven well-equipped departments and workshops, all thanks to a visionary leader. In the over two years of the Okoa administration, the technical colleges have recorded appreciable number in students' enrollment, and as of today, the schools offer subjects from junior secondary school GSS 1 to 3 and vocational school VS 1 to 3 with a total enrollment figure of over 5,000 200 students. In order to remove bottlenecks in the smooth takeoff and running of these technical colleges, the Okoa administration had to draw from the pool of teachers in the employ of the state's post primary education board. In that regard, qualified and technically competent teachers were deployed from the state secondary schools to be instructors in the technical colleges. For a very long time, Emphasis has not been on vocational uh, studies, so now some of them diverted. But now that we're bringing them back, the interest is coming back. And just as we are growing the, the studentship, we're also growing the urge to begin to teach. And recently you know that we have just established a, a teacher's training center in Owoyibo. And the belief is that in terms, people in different, teachers in different skills can be taken to these training centers and that will also help them to be able to be better prepared to train the students. All considered, the decision by Governor Ifanyo Koa to resuscitate the technical colleges is generally viewed as one step that will take Delta State 
to the next level of competitive human, physical and economic development. As technical colleges begin to turn out graduates from the various vocations at the turn of the year, the state will be replete with a crop of young, skilled persons who will bridge the yawning gap and meet the need for reliable, dependable and efficient carpenters, auto mechanics, builders and electricians to mention but a few. That will not only raise a fresh group of youth who will be self-employed, financially independent, but who will also contribute to build a healthier, more peaceful and more virile Delta state. Indeed, time will tell of what will become of these technical colleges and the value they will add to the overall growth of Delta State. But, so far, so good.